Welcome to Biology at Ease. In my previous video, I explained the process of nutrition. In this video, I'll be explaining respiration. Respiration is the process of intake of oxygen by the body and utilizing this oxygen to break the food to release energy. The reaction for respiration says that oxygen inhaled by our body combines with the food leads to the breakdown of food to release carbon dioxide, water and energy. We often use the term breathing for respiration which is actually wrong. You must note that breathing and respiration are totally different terms. Breathing is a physical process which involves inhaling of oxygen by the body and exhaling out the carbon dioxide whereas respiration is a biochemical process involving breathing that is intake of oxygen by the body and exhaling out carbon dioxide as well as the oxidation of food that is breakdown of food by the body. So breathing is a part of respiration. Respiration involves both breathing as well as oxidation of food. So you should not use the term breathing for respiration breathing is just intake of oxygen and exhaling out carbon dioxide but when you are using breathing along with oxidation of food you must use the term respiration now let's see how this energy released by the oxidation of food during respiration is stored in our body before coming to this topic let me explain you three words that are ADP ATP and inorganic phosphate ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and inorganic phosphate is a substance containing phosphorus and oxygen. All these three substances ADP, ATP and inorganic phosphate are present in the cells of our body. Now when the energy is released by respiration this energy combines with ADP and phosphate to produce ATP. So ATP has a high energy content whereas ADP has a low energy content. So the energy released by respiration is stored in the form of ATP in our body cells and when our body needs energy this ATP gets broken down using water and releases ADP phosphate and energy since energy in our body is stored in form of ATP therefore ATP is known as the energy currency of the cell so if you are asked in what form the energy released by respiration is stored in our body the answer will be ATP and ATP is also known as the energy currency of the cell there are two types of respiration aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration is the type of respiration which involves oxygen whereas anaerobic respiration is the type of respiration in which oxygen is not involved the glucose food through respiration is oxidized to produce two molecules of pyruvic acid now the presence or absence of oxygen during the respiration process decides how this pyruvic acid will be further broken down when oxygen is present, one molecule of glucose through a process called glycolysis which takes place in the cytoplasm produces two molecules of pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Now when oxygen is present, these two molecules of pyruvic acid are further broken down in mitochondria by a process called Krebs cycle and releases 38 molecules of ATP along with carbon dioxide and water. So this process is called aerobic respiration. So what is aerobic respiration? Respiration. Aerobic respiration is the type of respiration in which complete breakdown of glucose takes place with the release of 38 molecules of ATP. In anaerobic respiration, oxygen is absent. So, the glucose first is broken down to pyruvate in the cytoplasm by the process called glycolysis. But since oxygen is absent, partial breakdown of pyruvate takes place and instead of formation of 38 molecules of ATP, only two molecules of ATP are produced along with two molecules of ethanol and carbon dioxide. This anaerobic respiration takes place in simple microorganisms like yeast, bacteria by the process called fermentation. The fermentation step takes place when pyruvate is broken down to release energy and ethanol. Anaerobic respiration also occurs in human muscle cells. When we do vigorous exercise due to lack of oxygen in our body, partial breakdown of glucose occurs by anaerobic respiration. So this glucose in the absence of oxygen in our muscle tissue during vigorous exercise is broken down to release two molecules of ATP. But instead of ethanol which is produced in yeast in our body, lactic acid is produced. Now let's quickly differentiate between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is the type of respiration which involves breakdown of glucose food in the presence of oxygen to release 38 
intermediate molecules of ATP whereas anaerobic respiration is the respiration in which the breakdown of food occurs in the absence of oxygen and releases only two molecules of ATP along with ethanol and carbon dioxide in yeast by the process called fermentation or lactic acid in human beings. So this is all about the introduction to respiration. Now let's see how respiration occurs in different living organisms. Different parts of the plant perform the process of respiration differently but in animals respiration occurs as a single unit. In plants the process of respiration occurs by diffusion. The roots of the plant contains epidermal cells which are known as root hair and these root hair comes in contact with the oxygen present in the soil and absorbs this oxygen by the process called diffusion and transports the oxygen into different parts of the root. The stems of a herb or herbaceous plant contain tiny pores which are known as stomata. So the site for respiration in the stems of a herbaceous plant is stomata. In big plants with woody stems there is a covering which is known as lenticel and this lenticel helps in exchange of gases. So in big plants stomata are absent and lenticels helps in exchange of gases whereas in herbaceous plants stomata are the site of respiration. The leaves of a plant also contain stomata so stomata helps in exchange of gases and leaves. So so in roots, epidermal cells called root hair performs respiration. In stem of a herbaceous plant, stomata performs respiration whereas in bigger plants, lenticels are responsible for respiration and in leaves of the plant, stomata are responsible for exchange of gases. Now the respiration process occurs in both day as well as night whereas the process of photosynthesis occurs only during the daytime. During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is absorbed by the plants. But since during the daytime along with photosynthesis, respiration is also occurring and during respiration carbon dioxide is released. So during the daytime, carbon dioxide is both released as well as absorbed by the plants. But the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the plant during the daytime by the process of photosynthesis is much larger than the amount of carbon dioxide released by the plants through respiration. So we come to a conclusion that during the daytime oxygen is released by the plant and carbon dioxide is taken in whereas at night photosynthesis does not occur and only respiration takes place. So carbon dioxide is taken out from the body of the plants and oxygen is absorbed by the plants. So this is how respiration occur in plants. Now let's see how different animals perform the process of respiration. There are five different modes of respiration occurring in different animals. Simple unicellular organisms like amoeba perform respiration by plasma membrane or cell membrane. This type of respiration is known as surface respiration. Earthworms uses skin for exchange of gases and this mode of respiration is called cutaneous respiration. In aquatic animals, gills helps in respiration and this mode of respiration is called branchial respiration. In insects like grasshopper, cockroaches, tiny pores present on the body called spiracles along with a respiratory tube called trachea helps in respiration. So this mode of respiration is called tracheal respiration. In higher animals like man, lizards, birds, lungs helps in respiration and this mode is known as pulmonary respiration. So there are five types of respiration occurring in animals. Surface respiration through cell membrane, cutaneous respiration through skin, branchial respiration through gills, tracheal respiration through spiracles and trachea and pulmonary respiration through lungs. There is a special case which is seen in frogs. The larval stage of frog which are known as tadpoles perform branchial respiration that is they respire through gills whereas the adult frogs respire through well developed lungs so the adult frog performs pulmonary respiration. Now let's have a look upon the respiratory organs present in humans. Humans have a well-developed respiratory system containing various respiratory organs which includes nose, nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli. Alveoli are the main site of respiration in humans so these are known as the functional unit of respiration. 
oxygen is taken in by the body through external nostrils present on the nose from the nose the oxygen passes to nasal cavity which is also known as nasal chamber from nasal chamber the oxygen then reaches the pharynx which is a 12 cm long tube after pharynx the air or oxygen enters the voice box which is known as larynx after larynx the oxygen reaches windpipe called trachea and trachea divides into branches which are known as bronchi these bronchi further divides into branches called bronchioles and the bronchiole contains bag like structures which are known as alveoli the air taken in by the body through nostrils finally reaches the alveoli and it is the alveoli where actual exchange of gases between carbon dioxide and oxygen takes place bronchi bronchioles and alveoli are present in sac like structures which are known as lungs so lungs are the main respiratory organs which contains the functional unit of respiration known as alveoli the respiratory muscle in human is known as diaphragm when you breathe in the diaphragm contracts and becomes flat this increases the volume inside the lungs and since volume is inversely proportional to the pressure the pressure inside the lungs due to increased in volume decreases and since air moves from high pressure to low pressure the air from the atmosphere reaches the lungs because of the decreased pressure present inside the lung but when you exhale or breathe out the diaphragm relaxes and becomes arched this decreases the volume inside the lungs and since volume is inversely proportional to pressure due to decrease in volume inside the lungs the pressure increases and the air moves out from high pressure to low pressure that is the air moves from lungs to the atmosphere the oxygen which is taken in by the body is utilized to break the food after the breaking of food the energy release is stored in the form of atp by the body cells and the carbon dioxide which is produced as a result of respiration then passes to the blood stream and from blood stream the carbon dioxide reaches the alveoli and when we breathe out through alveoli the carbon dioxide is released in atmosphere so this is how the various organs of respiratory system performs the process of respiration in humans the average rate of breathing in human adult is 12 to 16 times per minute but in infants it is 44 times per minute so this is all about the process of respiration respiration now let's quickly revise everything respiration is the process of intake of oxygen by the body and utilizing this oxygen for the breakdown of food to release energy plants and animals have different modes of respiration in plants stomata lenticels root hair or epidermal cells helps in respiration whereas in animals five different types of respirations are performed which includes pulmonary respiration branchial respiration tracheal respiration surface respiration and cutaneous respiration so this is all about the process of respiration if you like this content please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching